Do you see the pale blue dot on this image? That's Earth. That's us. That's all we are to space. A single fleck of dust orbiting a single star and a single galaxy in a universe filled with billions upon billions of these. But if space is so vast, so big, how do we even start to make sense of it all? How do you astronomers make sense of space? I want to introduce you to four concepts that astronomers use to understand the universe. Four ways to solve mysteries. I want to show you how these concepts help in, in understanding the universe, but also how they can help you in your lives. So how do these methods help astronomers? Well, for the past four years, I've been working on one of the greatest mysteries in modern-day astronomy, a mystery which started back in 2007, when something more powerful than we had ever seen before fried our telescope in a single flash of light. We had no idea where it was from, and we had no idea what had created it. We used this flash of light, which we called a fast radio burst, or an FRB, to test our ideas. Now, how do these ideas also apply to your life? Well, to that end, I want to introduce a metaphor of the unknown. Something like a monster under the bed. At some point in all of our lives, we have been afraid of such an unknown. After all, that monster, that could be anything. I mean, it could be big, could be vast, could be streaming out under the bed. So how would an astronomer approach such a monster just as they look, would when looking up into the vastness of space? Well, that brings us to the very first concept. Always try to think of the connections to the things you do know. Everything always has those connections. Everything has to interact with something you do know. This is always the case. Take, for instance, our monster under the bed. Now, we may not know what the monster looks like, but we know what a bed looks like. Regardless of the shape or the form the monster takes under the bed, we know that it has to fit under the bed. Now, that connection, the connection between a bed and a monster, is something we call a boundary condition. Boundary condition because it is on the boundary of something we do know, the bed, and something we don't know, the monster. Now, that flash of light which we saw in 2007, that also contained a boundary condition. It was just a couple of milliseconds long, faster than the blink of an eye. We could calculate that that had come from something which was just 300 kilometers across. Now, 300 kilometers is pretty small for space. Something no larger than the Netherlands was creating more light in a millisecond than the sun does in a century. Here, the duration of the burst formed a boundary condition on the remarkably small size. Now, identifying such boundary conditions is essential in astronomy. So how would an astronomer go about finding more of these boundary conditions, more of these beards? Well, that leads us to the second concept. Think about one thing at a time. Let's go back to our monster under the bed. Now, it might be tempting to think about the size and the shape and the smell or the texture of the monster under the bed all at the same time. But why do that all at the same time. Instead, it's easier to think about one thing at a time. For instance, does the monster ever move around? And if you think carefully, it doesn't. Even if you listen very carefully, you don't hear it running around under the bed. So you can start to narrow down your possibilities. It's probably either 
uh, standing still under your bed, or it's very sneaky. Now, you can use that same concept with the flash, which we saw in 2007. Here, too, we could think about the size and shape and the color and the temperature of the object emitting that flash all at the same time, but no. Instead, we want to think about one aspect at a time. For instance, does it ever change over time? Now, this flash, the flash was emitted, and then suddenly there was nothing. That's not like the sun, which is always shining. So even just that simple step shows us that whatever it is, it's not like the sun, it has to be something else, something more extreme. Now, these two concepts, finding your boundary conditions and thinking about one aspect at a time, they help narrow down your possibilities, they limit your options. But you can do even better, even better using a third concept. Keep your idea simple. Let's go back to our monster under the bed. Now, here, perhaps it's a Yeti-like monster lying flat under the bed. Perhaps it's a Tetra-shaped monster fitting just in between any of the boxes you have under your bed. But why go for something so complicated? Instead, go with a simple idea. Start, for instance, by assuming that it's a very simple shape, like a soccer ball. Rather than expecting it to have 44 tentacles, try expecting none. Wherever possible, run with the simplest idea. That flash which we had seen, we were trying to find its origin, what had created it. Now, we knew that it had to be very fast in doing so. And we also knew that it had to be very bright. Now, if our idea had to be simple, what options did that leave us? Fast, bright, and simple. Well, why not an explosion? We know of stars in space that explode at the end of their lifetimes. Perhaps it was something like that. That leads us to the fourth, final, and most important concept in approaching the unknown. Test your ideas. Take our monster under the bed. We may have formed an image or an idea in our minds of what the monster may look like, but what good is it if we never try to find the monster? One approach would be to simply actually look under your bed, and perhaps you don't actually find the monster. That's okay. Then you can adapt your idea. Perhaps it's only there while you're sleeping, and then you can test that idea, and you can adapt your idea, and test your idea, and on and on and on. And every time, you get a step closer to the truth. That flash which we saw in 2007 wasn't the first one. By now, in 2020, we've seen hundreds of these flashes of light coming from all across the sky. Remember our idea that some sort of an explosion might have been behind these flashes? Oh, well, time tested that idea for us. At some point, we saw multiple flashes of light from all across the sky, and one of them had multiple flashes from the same spot. Now, generally explosions only happen once. They explode, and then there's nothing left to explode. So that told us that explosions probably weren't the idea, the right way to go. We had to adapt, we had to change our idea. Reality isn't going to change to what you think it is. It is always us who have to adapt. And so we did. Earlier just this week, we found evidence that these flashes might emerge from objects that flare. These flares then collide with each other, creating these be brilliant, beautiful flashes of light that we then see on Earth. But our understanding will change. That is the nature of science. There will always be more mysteries. But it is what we learn along the way that changes how we see the universe. All by using four concepts. Finding your boundary conditions. Thinking about one aspect at a time. Keeping your idea simple and testing your idea. These four concepts allow astronomers to explore the vastness of space. They allowed us to 
approach the monster and the owlbeard, and they allow you to explore every kind of unknown in your life. So when you next encounter something that you don't know, don't let its size or its complexity scare you. Instead, approach it and say hello. Thank you.